Pebbles and Dino DIY Nail Decals Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video I'm going to be showing you a Pebbles and Dino from the Flintstones Nail Art Design and after I did my Fred and Wilma 3D Flintstones I got both of these requested a lot so I decided to do that and I used my little homemade sticker decal technique which I kind of really was playing around with in January, but I decided to do it again to create these cute little characters. And the acrylic color I'm using is from a company that I just discovered called Double Dip, and it's dipping powder, which is acrylic. And so I got these three colors from them, and they actually work absolutely perfect for... <laughs> it's my bingo card, you goof. Um, work really well for this Flintstones design. And Double Dip sends bingo cards in their boxes and you go to their Facebook group and then they put out these five colors and if you get bingo on your bingo card with the five colors that they post in their Facebook group then you get a little prize package which is kind of cool and it doesn't cost you anything to do you just have to check it so I will put the link to their secret Facebook group it's a private group so you have to apply to get into it in the description box below and I'll also post a picture of this QR code on Instagram with this design so if you want to enter their little Facebook group and get a chance at winning some stuff and also just having a little camaraderie definitely check that out and I will see you next time bye so I'm going to begin and just apply a very thin layer of a cover pink over my natural nail underneath where I'm going to be placing the two decals so that's my two middle fingers and then on a silicone mat I'm going to begin painting pebbles with gel polish so the reason that you're going to want to use gel polish is because one it'll peel off the silicone mat really easily and completely and two gel polish is intentionally quite flexible so that if it's applied on a natural nail it'll bend and flex with the natural nail and not flake off very easily which is a really good thing if you're painting it on something flat and then want it to adapt to the curvature of a nail so gel polish is kind of the way to go here and flash cure constantly when you're doing a design like this it doesn't need to have a full cure uh, if you can tell I'm not applying I know it's a little out of focus and guys I'm sorry it'll get fixed in just a moment um, but you can tell that it's I'm not applying too many layers of things over the top of each other I'm trying to keep them you know each in their own spot and so it's not very thick this entire decal is approximately it's one to two layers of gel polish thick which is fantastic since it's going to be within an encapsulation so keeping it thin is pretty vital and so you just want to flash cure it whenever you finish with a color so like if as soon as you finish up with painting your eyes flash cure it really quick uh, just to make sure that the gel polish doesn't run or move or you don't accidentally bump it or smudge it just by getting too close to it and you can add as much shading and detail as you want that's kind of left up to you you can keep it pretty simple and cutesy or you can go really deep into the definition on it make sure that you do add these little v-shaped spots on her green dress and try to make sure you make her small enough that you do get to see her green dress on the nail because it kind of ties that whole hand together now it's in focus yay sorry you guys sometimes when i'm recording i just get so into the zone i forget to check these things which is something i make sure to uh i try to make sure to do but sometimes i forget but then after you have it all done cure it completely and then apply a layer of a flexible gel top coat over the top of the little pebbles two brands i know of that i just from use i know are super flexible are the shellac top coat and madame glam's top coat both of those are nice and bendy and work really really well for this but then measure the decal to the nail so make sure it's not going to be so big that it goes over the sides or goes up past where your nail is on the cuticle so just smother that nail with some nail glue I've used both a brush on nail glue for this and nail glue in a tube and for whatever reason nail glue in the tube works better and then place that little decal down and then take a piece of plastic wrap and hold it down over the nail and really I don't know if you guys can tell how vigorously I rubbed that in place and then if there's any little bits like you can tell that end is sticking up put some more glue underneath it re-hold it down really hold down every little spot that needs to be needs to be held down and then after it's all the glues dried gently file off any extra gel from the tip of the nail and then encapsulate it with a layer of clear acrylic and I would definitely recommend using clear acrylic I did try encapsulating them with some builder gel and it just didn't work as well it didn't cover the decals well kind of wanted to slip off so acrylic seems to be the way to go for this if you are an acrylic person if you are gel I'm sure you could play around with it and get it to work so now for the next character, we're going to be painting Dino. So for this set, I have a Pebbles hand and a Dino hand. And you'll see, you saw them in the beginning, but you'll see how they're 
uh, definitely separate, but they go together very well. So same thing for Dino, silicone mat. And if you guys are wondering about my silicone mat, it is the best purchase I've made in a long time. And eventually I'm going to be doing a salon walkthrough or like a home salon walkthrough when I have it finished, which will be hopefully in a couple months. But this silicone mat that I have is actually for kitchen use and it was not too terribly expensive but it's meant to be put on like a kitchen counter to protect it almost like a hot pad or a trivet and it works fantastic for backgrounds for recording because I can work on top of it I can wash it it's fantastic so if I if you want I can throw a link to that in the description box below just a separate little note um, on this video but I love that silicone mat. It works fantastic. So get your whole little Dino painted. Same thing. You can detail this minimally. You can go wild with it. You can have some fun and, you know, mess around with his colors a little bit because there's a bunch of different colors for Dino. Anywhere from almost like a beet red into a fuchsia into purple. So with Dino, you can kind of have fun with what coloration you want to give him. I think it depends on what age you're watching the Flintstones from, but I wanted it to match this gorgeous acrylic I have. So I went with more of like the pinky ready type tone of color for him. And same thing, you can do as much shading and details you want. And then when you're all done, cure it completely and then apply a nice layer of doll top coat and make sure that you top coat a little bit exaggeratedly on his little hairs so that they don't fall off. Same whole situation here. Secure Dino to the middle finger on the Dino hand with generous amounts of nail glue set him down, grab your little bit of plastic film, stretch it around, really hold it down. And then he, I didn't have much trouble with him sticking up because it's a little bit smaller of a decal. So you can just go through and do your encapsulation, which is super awkward for me with my left hand. It's just the angle for the camera, I think is what's awkward. I applying the acrylic isn't too bad, but yeah. So now I'm going to be showing you, this is dipping powder, acrylic powder from, uh, it's double dip nails and this color is called scarlet dress and this I so I had these three colors that they sent me and I was looking at it I'm like I don't know why but I feel like the Flintstones would be perfect we have a color for Pebbles dress we have a color for Dino and we have the background color for Fred's outfit so I put this together so I applied that scarlet dress over my two thumbs and then going back to my silicone mat I'm going to be painting the Flintstone logo with yellow gel polish to start with and when you're painting this logo you can be a little bit bigger because it's going to be going over two nails and not just one. So still keep in mind the size of the nail as you're doing this, but know that you have a bit more space. So that's the one good thing about a silicone mat that's made for nail art is a lot of them have little nail shapes so you can make sure that you're painting within the right size. Whereas if you have one that's just white like this one, you don't have that little help. But then I'm going to paint the Flintstones, little on the Flintstones, I'm going to be painting some orange as some shading on the letters and then going around them with black and when I'm going around them with black I'm attaching many of the letters together so there's no longer a gap between them and sort of filling in not entirely because there's still some little spaces where it's clear but you do want to fill it in just a bit so that the letters aren't all separate they do kind of attach together and then when you go to peel them off they stick together which you can also do with the clear gel polish the top coat when you apply it but it's just something to bear in mind that you do kind of want to make these a bit more single like a single piece instead of each individual letters so then just like I mentioned we're then fully curing it and then applying some uh, very thin layer of gel top coat over the top of the Flintstones logo this time just kind of don't try to just go where you did but fill it in completely so fill in around all of the letters especially like the dot on the eye that isn't touching anything else to so make sure that it's got clear top coat everywhere peel that off and then just make sure how it fits on the nail but you should be able to just cut it right in half right past the e of the and then you can glue that down onto the nail i'm having some trouble with my nail glue you know me and nail glue so then pick up your little flintstones logo set that down press it down with your plastic wrap once again and you can use the same piece of plastic wrap for this entire set and then go ahead and do it with the other one. My nail glue glued itself shut again. And then line it up so that they fit perfectly. Use a tweezers to give you a little bit of help if you need it. Hold down that other logo and then you can see they fit together really quite well. And then I'm going to encapsulate this one as well. So the great thing with this is that you can paint these little designs in advance. So if you say, if you have a client that emails you or <laughs> emails, who uses email anymore? I do. But if you have a client that texts you a photo ahead of time, you can, and you see, oh my goodness, they're going to want to have a painting of whatever character. You can make it ahead if you have time and it might just speed up your appointments and make your day a little more streamlined. 
So now I'm going to take, and I have my nail filed and buffed and all of that great stuff. And I'm going to be painting the little Fred Flintstone spot pattern. So his spots are like little triangles of different shapes and sizes. So fill that in around the two nails. And then the next color I'm going to show you is called green seaweed. And as you can see, it's not quite as bright as it looks like in the tube, but it is still very, very bright. And that whole not quite as or tube, I don't know what I'm talking about, in the jar, that's pretty common with dipping powder and acrylic powder. You can never really tell what it's going to look like until you test it out. So for me, whenever I'm looking at getting some, or whenever I get some new acrylic, the first thing I do is I always test it, I always swatch it, because that's the only way you can really know what color it's going to be. So I applied that green seaweed over my ring finger on the pebbles hand, and then I'm going to be painting the little V-shaped pebbles spotted pattern over that entire nail. I love how this set has animal print and it's still very elegant and it's got characters and everything all mixed up together. It's like my favorite things all, all together. And then also on the pebbles hand on both the index and the pinky nails, I'm going to create a green nude gradient. So I'm going to be applying that green seaweed color at the tip and then blending it up. I don't know why I had so much trouble. You'll see it on the other hand with creating a gradient with these colors. They're all very nice and pigmented. The actual texture of the acrylic is lovely. I had such an easy time applying the overlay that it was like a breeze and it almost required no filing. So these, these acrylics I'm super impressed with. So I definitely uh, am excited to explore more from that company. I've never heard of them. So I was very excited to get to try out and I'm all for acrylic. So the next color is going to be burnt henna. You know, a bigger acrylic collection is never a bad thing. And this color looks like it's a really fluorescent pink until you, like I said, until you swatch it and then you realize it's like a deep raspberry color. It's so pretty. Very, um, it'll look really nice in the autumn, but it also looks great in the summer. So it's a very versatile kind of pinky red. So I'm gonna apply the same thing, uh, overlay over my ring finger. And like I said, you guys, did you see how easy that applied? It applied so easy and it's also a dipping powder which if you really want to talk technicalities any dipping powder is acrylic powder any acrylic powder can be used as dipping powder but some of them just work better and the really finely milled acrylic is what works best for dipping powder and i can tell by the application that this one is a really fine very smooth acrylic so then i've got the little dino spots on that and then for same thing I'm going to be doing my gradient on my index and pinky nails I'm not that good with gradients with my left hand and I know that I keep coming back to my left hand but it's I can apply a gradient with no problem with my right hand and I've always been able to and people that have said that they have had trouble with it I have never really understood because it's just come so easily for me to get a gradient with acrylic much more so than gel polish or builder gel getting a gradient smooth with that can sometimes be a headache but with acrylic, it's always just come naturally to me. And so I finally understand it, you guys. And acrylic can be a pain in the butt to gradient, to create a gradient with if, you know, you're having trouble. So after I've got those done, then I'm going to be applying a bit of jewelry gel along the cuticle of the four nails that have the gradient. So the two green ones and the two pink ones, two on each hand. So apply the jewelry gel and then apply some gel top coat over the top of the jewelry gel. And you can apply the gel top coat on all the nails, just go down the line. But then before you cure it, so you've got the wet jewelry gel and wet gel top coat, then you're going to press your crystals into place. So on the green hand, on the pebbles hand, I'm going to use a pink crystal and then two clear on each of the fingers. And then on the other hand, I used a green crystal and two clears. So they kind of tie each other back that way. And I absolutely love this set. The colors, you wouldn't necessarily immediately think they go together, but in this circumstance, they look so beautiful. And I love the Flintstone, so I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And don't forget to take me in recreations on Facebook or Instagram, and I will see you next time. Bye!